Hi, my name is Eric and I'm a sales engineer here at Control by Web. In this demo, I will be covering the basics of the web interface or firmware for our web relay devices. Thanks for joining us and we'll start with the web relay. Hello and welcome to this webinar for our web relay series. In this webinar series, we're going to be covering the Web Relay, the single input and output module, the Web Relay Quad, the Web Relay 10, and the Web Relay Wireless. After entering in the IP address for the Web Relay here, we're on the main page for the firmware. We can see the model number, the firmware version, and the serial number for the unit. Under the Networks tab, we can come in and we can configure the network settings to our local network. We can also, by default, the TC, TCP port and Modbus port are defaulted to these port numbers. You can change those ports to fit best for your application needs. Speed and mode. Speed, the unit is defaulted to 10 megabytes, which is recommended as it will use less power and increase the life of the unit. Mode, it's also defaulted to half duplex, which just indicates how the unit is communicating data over the ethernet connection. Under the passwords tab, we can configure our setup and control page passwords. We recommend using at least eight characters in a combination of numbers and special characters. You can also enable the control page password to protect the relay and input status so that no one would have outside access to this. Relay and input. By default, the unit is under this standard mode. You can come in and you can configure the relay options and you can choose what would fit best for your application. There's more information in the user's manual about this as well. You can also trigger a remote relay, whether that's another control by web device or another web relay series device, to trigger a relay on one of those devices. If you have the control page password enabled, you will need to enter in that password here. You can also specify how to keep the connection alive between the two units. Here, under automatic reboot, we can ping another IP address, whether that's another control by web device or another device that has an IP address. We can come through and we can add settings that would make the most sense for your application needs. And then you can have our unit remove power from the relay or reapply it until successful pings have resumed. Under control page setup, we can configure and rename the relays and the relay and input to make the most sense for the end user. And then we can specify here at the bottom how often do we want the page to refresh of the status. Here on the control page, we can view the status of the input and relay, and also if we have the automatic reboot task enabled, that will display here. Thanks for joining us for the web relay, single relay and input module. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the web relay quad. Here on the Web Relay Quad, we're back on the main page for the firmware when we access the unit using the IP address. We have the model number, the firmware version, and then the serial number. Here under the Networks tab, we can enter in the network settings for the Web Relay Quad from the IP address down to the port numbers. We also have the speed and mode, just like the Web Relay single input module. We have the 10 megabytes and the 100 megabytes. We recommend the 10 megabytes as it, as it preserves power and increases the life of the unit. We also have the mode, which is defaulted at half duplex, which just, which just tells the unit how we're gonna communicate the information. Here under passwords, just like the web relay, we recommend at least eight characters and a combination of numbers and characters. And the control page password is also disabled, which we can enable to protect the relays from being triggered. 
Since the Web Relay Quad has four relays, there's a tab for each one of the relays. And here under relay number one, we can configure the control page setup for what we would see on the control page. So we can rename this unit so that it is familiar to the end user. Just under that, we have relay one setup where we can rename the relay so that it's user friendly and also change colors and the text of the on and off status so that it can be familiar as well. The same will be for Relay 2, Relay 3, and Relay 4. And after we've configured each one of the relays, we can come to the control page and view the status. Here it's just very simple. Since we didn't rename everything, Relay Off, and we can go in and we can trigger everything on. Thanks for joining us, and next we're going to be moving on to the Web Relay 10. After we've entered in the IP address for the Web Relay 10, we are again taken here to the main page where we can see the model number, the firmware version, and the serial number for the unit. Since the Web Relay 10 Plus supports temperature, we can configure the unit to be in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Under the Networks tab, since the Web Relay 10 Plus supports DHCP, we can go ahead and enable that, which is just where the router will assign the network settings for the unit, which you can see when I've clicked yes, the settings are gone away and you would need to access your local network's router for that information or, or where the unit is connected. But for the purposes of this webinar, we're just going to have it disabled. I can come in, give the IP address that's local to the network, also specify the port numbers as well. As you can see, we also have speed and mode here, which we recommend leaving the unit at 10 megabytes as it will preserve power and also increase the life of the unit. We also have mode, which will establish how the information is being communicated over ethernet. We have additional details in our user's manual about this. Since the Web Relay 10 Plus supports email notifications, we can also configure our email server or SNMTP server settings here, and it supports up to five email addresses. There's also different links for the email, the full, which will display all of the IOs, or short, which will only display the when the message comes across the IO that was triggered. Under the Advanced Network tab, we can enable Modbus, remote services, SNMP management, or an IP filter range. Under the password tab, we can configure the setup in the control page password. As previously mentioned, we can, the password needs to be at least eight characters and a combination of numbers and special characters to increase the strength of the password. And you can enable the control password to protect um, somebody from triggering the relays. Under the date and time tab with the Web Relay 10 Plus, we can configure the unit to get the time manually or with an NTP server, and we can tell the unit how often we would like to sync up that time. You can also enable or disable daylight savings depending on when that would happen during the year. Under the logging tab, we can enable the log to start a specific time, log at a rate, and then we can specify which IOs we would like to log. Under the input tab, since the Web Relay 10 Plus supports two digital inputs, we can come in and rename this so that it can be user friendly. And we can also configure the input with these different settings from a counter or increments based on when the input turns on or off. And then we can have the device e send an email based on when the input status changes. Under Relays, we can come in and configure all 10 relays for our application. We can come in and rename the relay so that it can be user-friendly. And we can also change the on and off status to make the most sense for the end user. You can also specify the pulse duration, what the relay state is on power up, or we can also have the unit send out 
email notifications based on when the status changes for the unit. Under sensors, we can come in and we can program the different sensors, different temperature sensors that are supported on the Web Relay 10 Plus. When you've connected a specific sensor to the one wire bus on the Web Relay 10, the unique ID for that sensor will auto populate. You can also set high or low alarms based on your application needs. You can also set a dead band to ensure that you won't have a trigger point where if the temperature is hovering on 20 degrees, as an example, we won't get a lot of email notifications as that temperature can fluctuate. We can also have the Web Relay 10 Plus send out email notifications based on those high or low alarms. Next, the Web Relay 10 supports scheduling. This unit supports 100 tasks that we can come in and specify when we want a specific action to occur. We can choose the frequency, the days, and how often we want this to occur. And we can specify which relays we want to turn on based on that. Under the script tab, we can come in and upload a basic script for our unit. This allows us to use complex or custom logic that is not inherently available on the Web Relay 10 Plus. On the control page setup, we can come in and add which IOs we would like to display on the control page. Once we've made those changes, we can then submit. Here on the control page, we can view all 10 relays that we have added on the control page setup. Thanks for joining us for the Web Relay 10 Plus. Now we're going to move on to the Web Relay Wireless. Here on the Web Relay Wireless main page, we can view the model number, the firmware revision, and the serial number for the unit. This unit also displays the input voltage as well. Since the Web Relay Wireless supports temperature, we can also select Fahrenheit or Celsius as well. Since this is a Wi-Fi unit, there is no reboot button like on our Ethernet devices. You can access this button through only through the firmware to reboot or to restore back to factory defaults. If you do lose access from the unit, whether that's you don't remember the IP address or the password for the unit, you can enter into the device using access point mode, which will default the unit back to the factory default IP, which is 192.168.1.2. Under the Wi-Fi Networks tab, we can then select the Wi-Fi for where the unit will be installed, and we can then select the security for the network and also enter in the password for the network as well. Under IP settings, the unit does support DHCP, which if you select yes, you will need to obtain the IP address from the local network or the router from where the unit is installed at. You can also specify the, H, the port number and any network settings if DHCP is not being used. You can also enable remote services if you're going to be using the control by web.cloud. This is where you would enter in that information as you can see here. If you're going to be using Modbus to communicate with the unit, you can enable that. And the Web Relay Wireless also supports emails. It supports up to eight different emails. So you can come in and enter in your SNMTP server settings so that you can get those alerts for when any of the status changes or even high or low alarms. After you've completed and filled out all this information, you would then want to submit those settings. And if you change the IP address on here at the very bottom, click Submit and Reboot to ensure that the network settings have taken effect. Under passwords, this is gonna be the same as the other Web Relay devices. We recommend at least eight characters, and you can use a combination of numbers and special characters to increase the strength of the password. The control page password is disabled, which you can enable that to protect the IO from outside access. Under date and time, you can come in and select how 
you would like to set the time on the unit, whether that's manually or through an NTP server. You can also select, if you do an NTP server, you can select how often you would like the unit to obtain that time. And then you can also specify daylight savings as well, and then just submit the settings after you've completed that. The Web Relay Wireless does support logging, which you can come in and select which IOs you would like to log, how often, and the start time for that. The unit also supports a daily email log, which you can select email addresses to send the log file to every day. The Web Relay Wireless does have one digital input. You can come in and rename the digital input so that it can be user-friendly, the status of the input when voltage is sensed or when there is no voltage present. You can also configure the input to count the number of times that the input is turned on. And then you can also send email alerts based on the input as well. Under the relay tab, you can come in and rename the relay so that it can be user friendly and also the status of when the relay is on or off. You can also send email notifications as well when the relay state is changed. The unit does support a remote relay option, so you can control another web relay wireless or other control by web devices relay from this page. You will need to specify the IP address, the port number. If the control page password is enabled, you'll need to enter that here, the relay number, and how often you would like to keep the state between the two units connected. Under the sensors tab, this is where you would connect temperature or humidity sensors to the Web Relay Wireless. Since the Web Relay Wireless supports four temperature sensors, you'll see each one of the sections for the sensors here. You can specify the high and low alarm for each one of the sensors. After you've connected the sensor up to the one wire bus on the Web Relay Wireless, the sensor address will automatically populate here. You will do this for each one of the sensors. You can rename the description of the sensor so it can be user-friendly, the high and low alarms, and then the email notifications based on the temperature being read. Under the scripts tab, you can upload your script here since the Web Relay Wireless supports a basic script. Here under the control page setup for the Web Relay Wireless, we can add and remove and configure the control page so that it can be user-friendly. The Web Relay Wireless also supports register values, which are values that do not hold a value, but can be used inside of basic scripts or hold other variables as well. Under the control page here, we can see that the relay and input and one temperature sensor is being displayed. Thanks for joining. We hope this demo helped you understand our Web Relay Series interface. If you'd like to schedule a live demo, click on the contact tab and select the schedule a free live demo button. For questions, contact us at 435-750-5999 or email support at controlbyweb.com.